Carol, and as you can hear from the accent, I'm not from these parts. I'm originally from Newcastle upon Tyne, England, and I've lived in America for 22 years. I spent the first 10 years on the East Coast in New Jersey and the last 12 years here in Phoenix, Arizona. So as you can tell from where I've lived, I've gardened both east and west of the Rockies. I'm currently president of Scottsdale Community Garden Club, which you can see here. I am a certified desert landscape designer from the Desert Botanical Gardens and I'm a Maricopa County Master Gardener. Um, my own garden has been on the Master Gardener Garden Tour several years ago and it has also been featured on PBS on a show on desert gardening. Um, my parents are gardeners, they've won awards for gardening. I've been gardening all my life. My grandfather was actually a gardener, that was his job, and he worked for a stately home like you see in Downton Abbey. So I guess you could say it's in the blood. Today I'm going to talk to you about vegetable gardening in Arizona. It will be a brief oversight and will apply specifically to vegetable gardening in the low desert in the Phoenix area. This is mainly for those of you who are novices, but it can also apply to those of you who are more experienced gardeners and who knows, perhaps you may actually learn something new. I would like to start with the basic, soil. It is particularly of importance here in Arizona. We have a very alkali soil, which for vegetables needs to be amended twice a year. The best and cheapest way to get soil amendments is to make your own compost. So for that reason, I would like to start by showing you how to make your own compost. One of the wonders of composting is the ability to take something that one would normally throw away and turn it into something useful. This reduces waste going into a landfill, as well as continuing the natural recycling of plant materials. Best of all, it's free. So how do you get started? What do you do? And how do you end up with this? Black gold. So what is compost? Compost is basically decayed plant matter that is used as a fertilizer. Composting is different from natural decomposition because it is controlled by humans. We are speeding up the natural process. And why, why have compost? What is it used for? Well, it's used to fertilize the plants and it's also used to improve soil structure, which we need really badly here in Arizona. What are the benefits to plants from using compost? Well, compost contains both macro and micro nutrients that are often absent in synthetic fertilizers. These nutrients are released slowly when you use compost, as opposed to a synthetic fertilizer, which can easily be washed out of the soil and will run into waterways. They can help to neutralize the pH of the soil, i.e. how alkali or acid it is. It can add beneficial organisms, which can help the health of the soil and the plants. It can help the soil structure. It can add some depth to the soil, which helps with the water retaining ability of the soil. Very important here in the desert. In actual fact, only a 5% increase in organic material can quadruple soil water holding capacity. So, how do you get started? Well, first of all, you need to find a site. Where are you going to place your compost heap? Obviously, you don't want to be placing it at the front door. That would be good for guests, could be a bit odorous, and it might not be a good thing for your HOA. So, probably somewhere unobtrusive. It doesn't really matter a whole lot whether it's in the sun or the shade, because it's so hot here in Arizona, it will break down quite quickly. So, you're preparing your site, you're clearing a piece of land, and obviously not good to put it right on top of Bermuda grass or weeds. So clear it of weeds and Bermuda grass, anything else. And then you're going to think about building yourself a compost heap. And you can see we have some examples of various types of compost heap that you can build. Um, if you choose not to build a compost heap, you can actually buy one from the solid waste management departments of the various valley municipalities and they are reasonably priced and work very well. So now I'm going to show you actually how to put together a compost pile. Here we have a compost heap that has never really been touched. It's been left here for three years and it is slowly rotting down. But, you know, most people can't wait three years. So I'm going to show you now how to make a compost heap from scratch. I've already added about a foot layer of dry material, of which we have plenty in Arizona. 
I'm going to add some water and this will need to be soaked for quite a long time to get the water all the way down to the bottom. For our purposes here, I'll stop now and then I'm going to add green material. This is vegetable matter that is no longer needed in the garden. This is actually um, kale that's gone to seed and it's finished with. So I'm chopping it up into smaller pieces so that it breaks down faster. You can use kitchen stuff, kitchen scraps, your tea, your coffee. Coffee's great for the garden, for the compost. Um, you can add flowers, basically any living matter. The only thing you won't want to be adding are meat scraps, um, anything that would attract a lot of pests. So I'm adding all this now and then I'm going to wet it again. Give it a good soak. And then I'm going to top it again with some of this dry material. I'm going to just take some of this, which is pretty dry and slowly rotting down. And I'm going to keep adding more layers as we go. Just a bit more. Hopefully there won't be any scorpions in here, but you never know. So basically we're forming a rotting lasagna. And then I'm going to wet it again. And you'll keep layering a you know, six to eight to 12 inches of dry, six to eight, 12 inches of green. So you're going brown, green, brown, green, and then you wet it and you leave it alone. Now you have a choice then. You can actually just leave it alone or you can turn it. Some people like to turn them every week. The more you turn it, the quicker it's going to rot down. If you're really active and want to do this, um, you have the time, you can get good compost within about six weeks. But if you just want to leave it and just make sure it's wet, turn it every two or three weeks, then it'll be fine. Um, and at the end of that, of course, you'll end up with the most amazing product that you got for free and that you can use to improve your soil and grow vegetables in your own home garden. Um, these are open sided compost heaps. There are also uh, plastic compost heaps of various sizes and designs. There's literally hundreds of them. And there's also the homemade wooden ones. So it's entirely up to you as to what you would wish to do. So you've decided to make a compost heap and you've got all that organized. So now how do you plan your vegetable garden? Well, in order to start planning your vegetable garden, you need to understand what our climate is like. Phoenix is in the USDA climate zone of nine or the sunset climate zone of 13. This is based on the expected minimum winter temperatures. It's most often used because it's an indicator of where the plants are generally adapted to grow. The growing seasons are long. The average minimum winter temperatures are 36 to 37 degrees Fahrenheit and the annual expected rainfall is about 10 inches. I say the term expected loosely because as you know recently we haven't been having those expected win winter rainfalls or summer ones but we work with what we have. Sunset climate zone 13 designation of low or subtropical desert is much more specific and actually a much better guide to show what will grow here in the valley and for that reason I recommend using that zone 13 designation more than the climate zone 9 from the USDA. We have two planting seasons here in the valley. We're actually very lucky um, compared to other parts of the uh, United States. Um, the two planting seasons are fall and spring. Now fall planting season, the crops are called cool season crops. And these are generally root vegetables and leafy vegetables. The only exception to this is peas. And we usually start planting those round about September, October time going into the fall. Our other planting season is spring. These are warm season crops and they're generally fruiting crops. You're going to be eating the fruit of that particular plant, such as tomatoes, peppers, eggplants. And we usually begin planting those in March. Before you start planting, there are four most important considerations. These are the sun, soil, water and timing. 
So your first thing you want to consider is the sun. In other words, the location of your vegetable garden. You need to think about the summer sun versus the winter sun. Um, that does make a huge difference. In the winter, the sun is much lower in the sky and thus you need to have that vegetable garden or vegetable area in the sun in the winter. Vegetables need a minimum of six to eight hours of sun per day. That's never a problem in the summer. We don't have any worry about summer sun. So your main concern is, does your vegetable garden get enough sun in the winter? Secondly, you do not want to place it close to trees or large shrubs. A tree or a large shrub will rob the vegetable area of water and nutrients. Obviously, that's not good for growing your own vegetables. And you still need to consider that you should have it near a water source. Obviously, you don't want to spend a lot of time lugging water miles away to your vegetable area. It's much more efficient to have a water source beside where you are going to plant your vegetables. You need to decide what kind of vegetable bed you would like to have. Do you want to do a raised bed or do you want to do a bed that's in the ground? Um, raised beds are pretty good except they're not really recommended for Arizona because they drain too quickly. Um, we'll talk about that later on. Um, don't make the garden larger than you can handle. Can you reach the middle of the garden bed, the vegetable bed, without standing on the soil? Um, start off small. If you've never done this before, think about how much you can actually take care of. If you can't take care of an acre of garden, then don't make an acre of garden. Make 20 foot by 10 foot or five foot by five foot. Start off small. And then the other consideration is, you want to make sure that you grow the right size crops for your plot. A zucchini or squash plant gets enormous. If you've only got a five by five plot, then that is going to take over your whole garden. So think about that. So the second thing, if you remember, was soil. The soil is actually pretty good. We have really good soil as far as nutrients are concerned here. But because it's so alkali, it's very difficult for the plants to take up those nutrients. And because most plant nutrient uptake is best in a neutral pH. So we have to tend to add amendments to our soil to help combat that pH. We also have a lot of clay. You can see some here. It, when it dries, it's rock hard. And although it holds the water well, it's so solid. It's very hard. You can imagine it's very hard for plant roots to get into that soil and grow well. So we have to do things to amend that soil both with um, nutrients and also physically by breaking it up. We also have something called caliche. And caliche is a layer of soil up to six inches deep. It's made up of soil that's cemented with calcium carbonate or lime. And it's impenetrable for roots and water. Those of you that live up in the northern parts of the valley, up towards the Cave Creek or Fountain Hill area, you will be very familiar with caliche. It is part of the mountains and it's very, very hard to garden in those areas. You need a jackhammer. When you make your beds, you want to try and have at least 40% of native soil because it has all the um, goodness in it and it has the native microorganisms which help with the plant growth. You also need to amend your soil at least twice a year. And by amendment, I mean adding to the soil. You've got to do it at least twice a year because of the heat. The soil breaks down much faster, the plants grow quickly, and they use up the goodness of the soil rapidly. If you don't amend your soil, your plant growth will be poor and your plants will not grow well. So that's twice a year, which is good because it ties in with our two growing seasons, spring and fall. So that's the natural time when you will wish to amend your soil. Third point that we were discussing is watering. And that is the $64,000 question here in Arizona. How do I do it? Where do I do it? When do I do it? Well, let's talk about the ways to water first. You can see here we have some drip irrigation of the black poly. These are laser drilled drips 
that actually have a shut off valve so if you weren't going to use this particular drip line you could just shut it off and save the water. The main black poly line has a shut off valve too so that again if you get a leak you can switch it off and not have a whole flood going on. So drip irrigation is the first recommended irrigation for watering your vegetable garden. The next option you could have is a soaker hose, which you could put attached to a timer. And the soaker hose basically just weeps water out over the surface of the soil around the vegetables. If you don't want to do either of those two things and you're still not sure if you want a vegetable garden or not, there's nothing wrong with a hose pipe. Just remember to water early in the morning and not when it's 110 degrees outside at three o'clock in the afternoon. You will not wish to use a sprinkler. A sprinkler can just spray water all over the place. It can lose so much water by evaporation that it's really not an economically viable way to water a vegetable garden. There's no one answer as to how much is the right amount of water. It depends on so many different variables. You have to use common sense and good judgment. Um, basically, if your plants are wilting at three o'clock in the afternoon in July, it's too hot, they're not going to take any more water up, there's nothing more you can give them. If they're wilting in January at two o'clock in the afternoon, then they probably do need a drink. It depends on the type of soil you have, it depends on how much water you're putting out, it depends on the type of plant. There is not one answer that fits all. These are onions that I'm harvesting now. These were actually planted in October and we pull them out and we're going to lay them down here. Oh dear, there you go. Just take off a bit of the soil here, give them a good shake, and they're going to be left here in the sun to ripen. Now you could use them now, you could just cut that bit off, but if you leave them to ripen in the sun, it gives them a better flavour. They'll probably stay in the sun for a couple of weeks until all this is dried up and shriveled, and then they can be cleaned off and stored in a cool, dry place, and they should last. I've been using onions I pulled in May, even at Thanksgiving great crop to grow. These are carrots. Wow, look at that one. These were planted um, actually probably, I think, about three months ago. Let's pull out and see what else is there. Oh, great. A couple more, see if there's any more. How do you like those, eh? Pretty impressive. I think we'll pull one more. Oh, there we go. And we'll just hose them off, take them home and cook them. Off we go. Now we're going to harvest some beets that were planted in the fall. I think these were planted probably about December, January time. It's really fall, winter. It's different kinds, um, which is great. It makes a good salad to have different colours of beets in them. These are a paler colour. And then we've got one over here that's a yellow beet. Really pretty. Um, I think that'll do us for now. Wait a minute, there's one more. There we go, big up for the ball. This is a different kind of broccoli. It's called purple sprouting broccoli. Doesn't give you the big heads, but it gives you these little pieces that you can bunch together and you eat both the stems and the leaves and they're really tasty. They last very well. If you pick this, it'll last a good few weeks in a bag in the fridge, full of goodness. Um, you can eat the leaves too, if you wanted to, like uh, cabbage. I find that a bit intense, but everybody likes their own thing and uh, it tastes good. Again, this is purple sprouting broccoli. These are my peas. This is they're getting towards the end of the peas now, but there's still a few left to pick. I'll just pick a few pods here, let you have a look at them. Put one up, let you see what it looks like. It's that nice popping sound. And there you go, a nice pod of peas. Tastes really good. If I'd left these and didn't pick them, which is what I do, you'd end up with something that looks like this. Obviously this isn't edible, but what I'll do is I'll open them up, see how hard they are. I'm going to save those for next year. So if I'm not in the garden 
getting them picked quickly enough. Those that go like this or like this one. We'll save those. I'll pick them, put them in a paper bag, save them until the planting in the fall. So I actually haven't bought a packet of pea seeds for about eight years, because I always save them every year. That's to eat, that's to save for next year. This is Swiss chard. This one's actually called Rainbow or Bright Lights Mix. It comes in all sorts of different colors. You can see a yellow one here, although this one is getting finished. This is a pink colored one. Uh, we have a white one over here, which I'll just take one off here. And back here behind me, we have this one, which is the most gorgeous, gorgeous red color. We just cut that out and show it to you. Really beautiful. And there we are, our small Swiss chard harvest. Delicious. So now you come to the fourth thing, the planting, the sowing of the seeds, the planting of the crops. You have your soil ready in your perfectly made vegetable bed and you have your watering just perfect. It doesn't matter any of those things though, the most important thing is timing because if you don't get that timing right, no matter whether you got it all perfect before, you cannot plant lettuce in May. It just won't grow. So you need to know the timing of this. You need to know what to plant. And in our area, you need to plant quickly maturing varieties, especially for spring planting. And for that, you should look at your seed packets. Seed packets give you a lot of information here. A lot of people don't read them, but they do give you good information. For instance, on this packet here of squash, summer squash, it says 45 days. What does that mean, 45 days? It means that from the time that seed germinates through the soil, it is 45 days to your crop for you to actually harvest something. These are edamame beans. These say 90 days, so it's a bit longer. So if you think about tomatoes, for example, you plant your tomatoes around about February, March time. If the packet of seed or the label on the tomato says 150 days, you can work out it's going to be the middle of summer. You're not going to get any tomatoes. You need something that says 90 days. You need something that's going to mature quickly because by the time that summer heat comes around, it'll be too late and the crop will not even produce. So you also want to think about the economic viability of what you're growing, i.e. is it worth growing? These are a sampling of some of the top 15 economic vegetables worth growing. We have beets, Swiss chard, tomatoes, broccoli, peppers, onions, squash, lettuce, beans, green onions, carrots, and peas. You might wonder why corn is over here all on its own. It's because really, e economically, Corn is not worth growing unless you have a lot of land. In order to grow a successful corn crop, you need at least 15 to 20 plants, and that takes up quite a lot of space. It could be as, fill as much as a 10 by 10 plot. So then what are you gonna do? You're only growing corn, and when you can grow cor uh, buy corn for eight, for a dollar, think about the amount of water that you're gonna use for that corn. It's not worth growing it. You're better off growing something like one of our top 15, excuse me, which is tomatoes. An organic tomato generally retails anywhere for about 350 a pound. And if you think about a regular good well-fed tomato plant producing about 10 pounds of tomatoes, if you had three of those plants, that's $350 worth of produce, obviously much more economically viable than the six for a dollar corn. So think about that when you're planting your crops. Also think about what you like to eat. If you don't like butternut squash, don't plant it. It's pointless having a whole crop of something that you're not going to enjoy and you end up giving to your neighbors. Another thing you want to consider when you're sowing seeds, and this usually applies more to fall crops than summer crops, spring summer crops, is you want to think about something called succession planting. That means not planting the whole packet of seeds at once. Um, in the case of something like a carrot, you don't want to have all your carrots come at once. So what you would do is you will take a foot and just sow the row of seeds in one foot. Then you'll wait a week, you'll sow another foot. Wait another week, sow another foot. So that you are controlling when your crop is coming. So you can have some lettuce coming here, some coming a little bit later, some coming a little bit later on. So you don't get a glut 
of everything and you're not just swamped in lettuce and or carrots. So you've planted your crops and now you're thinking about what's going to be growing and about how you're going to protect it from wildlife, from critters, from pests and diseases. I always like to go the organic route as far as that is concerned that seems to be the best way to go. Your other consideration is going to be the weather. You're going to think about protection from the cold in the winter and then protection in the summer. Something like this shade structure is absolutely perfect. It's actually a grapevine um, which grow very well here in Arizona. And then you sit and wait until finally it's harvest time, the moment you've all been waiting for. And I hope that you all have wonderful crops, that you grow great vegetables, that you enjoy your garden. I'm Carol and I love to garden.